The GSO-5 is a lightweight and small form factor GNSS receiver, but still provides us with tilt compensation for all of our measurements and has multifunctional capabilities to use it with other sensors. Think of it as the little brother to the GS-18, but coming in at a smaller size and more affordable rate while maintaining the performance that you would get with a larger GNSS receiver. So I'm going to take the GSO-5 and simply screw it in to our pole at the top, just like that. And the GSO-5 has a built-in long-lasting battery that charges with USB-C and it should last you the entire day you're out in the field. So here I'm connected to Leica Captivate on my CS30. I'm gonna come up here to the top and start our RTK stream. So now we're connected to Entrip. Our RTK is now initialized. So now we're getting corrections to our GSO-5 and I'm just gonna simply move the rod like this. And now we don't have to plumb the pull up every time we want to take a reading. And as you can see, while I tilt the rod, the built-in IMU in the GSO-5 is able to calculate where that position would be had we held the rod plumb. So this is really good for our efficiency since we don't have to plumb up the rod every time we take a reading. And the GSO-5 can be used as a standalone device. Like we can actually do a survey with this GNSS receiver. So here I'm just gonna call this point number 101. And then for the code, we can call this sidewalk and I'm going to begin a new line. Okay, this looks good. I don't have to plumb the rod or anything. I just hit measure and I'll hit store. Now I can move up a little bit, take another measurement here. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see that line for the sidewalk begin to form. If I go back over here, I want to get the other side of the sidewalk, measure, and we'll come down a little bit more. Maybe we'll take another one here, measure, and there we go. We're able to perform a survey like we would with any other GNSS receiver. And because it's small and lightweight, it's really easy to move around with it, but it still has a tilt compensation and a rugged design to handle rough conditions while we're surveying. All right, let's talk about integrating the GSO-5 with a surveying total station. Now, if you like working with this type of technology and you want to improve your skills in the fundamental principles of surveying, then I highly encourage you to check out thesurveyschool.com. The Survey School has over 100 highly motivated members looking to advance their skills in surveying and collaborate with others from around the world. Each week we get together and discuss various topics in the field of surveying with our live mastermind calls. We also have several courses to help aid you in your knowledge of surveying, whether that's introduction to surveying, route and construction, surveying or even just how to utilize survey control while you're flying a drone. Our community is actively growing so definitely be sure to sign up if you're looking to maximize your knowledge in surveying. So traditionally, when we're using a total station, this prism is the position at which the total station is measuring points. And the way that robotic total stations find these prisms is by doing a power search and rotating 360 degrees. Within that 360 degree rotation, it is looking for this prism and then once it finds it, it locks on it and then tracks its movement. So if I initiate a power search, And so now when I move my rod back and forth, you can see that the total station is following the prism with all of its movement. But the problem with this method is that the total station is simply spinning around and looking for the prism. Sometimes we have multiple prisms on site and the total station might accidentally lock on the wrong prism. All right, so I'm gonna have the total station power search for me. So there we go. Now the total station is locked on the wrong prism and I'm gonna have to manually unlock it. And then I need to move my total station closer to me and do a lot of manual work. And this is a major problem we face while we're surveying. But with the GSO-5, we can eliminate this problem by utilizing a hybrid setup, having the GSO-5 on top of our prism. The total station will rotate exactly to where the GSO-5 is and lock onto the prism directly below it. Lock the target. And there we go. It's able to find me and lock onto me very precisely. And this will save a lot of time in the field rather than having to power search every time you lose lock with your prism. Now there's a couple of ways that you can set up a total station in hybrid mode. The best way would be to do a resection, which means we'll measure random points using the GSO-5 in order to establish the position of our total station. So I'll simply come over to setup. I'll select resection method. I'll say okay. And so for point ID, this is going to be point number one. That is where the total station is set up. The instrument height is 4.8. So I'll say okay. The code here, I mean, we could just call this SCP survey control point. 
and they'll say okay. Now we're gonna be measuring a couple of points using the GSO5 while the total station is locked on the prism. And our target height, if we look at the side of our rod, is set to 5.8. That's the height to the prism. That's not the height to the GSO5. That will be calculated using like a captivate. So if I click on GS, you can see the height adjustment is made and there it is, 5.9936. And so now I can just take a measurement with my total station and the GSO5. Okay, we've stored one point. Now let's move over. Okay, here I am at a different position. I'm gonna click on GS and we're going to now take another measurement. Store that point. And we'll do one more me measurement here. I'll hit GS and then we can measure and store. And there we go, using resectioning, we were able to calculate the position of our total station in state plane coordinates using the GSO5. Now, one of the advantages of using a hybrid setup is being able to measure points with both a GNSS receiver and a total station, and being able to project both of those measurements into a local coordinate system. What do I mean by this? Say you're doing a survey in state plane coordinates using the GSO5. Well, perhaps you want to do local coordinates on a boundary survey, or perhaps you're on a site that has its own local coordinate system, and you want to take those measurements with your total station. And you're able to do this with the hybrid setup on Leica Captivate. What you're going to do is come over to create a coordinate system. And this will basically give us the option to translate our state plane coordinates that we collect to our local coordinate system, and then utilizing two different systems that are collecting data, project those coordinates into their appropriate system. So basically my coordinate system here, I'm just gonna call it local CC, and we'll say okay. It'll ask me if this is for ellipsoid or orthometric. Since we're taking ground measurements, this is going to be orthometric. And now it's gonna ask us to match points. So I'll say new. It'll ask me to identify a point that we've measured. So let's just use 104, for example. And then in the local coordinates, I can then create a new point. Let's say I call this 204. And then I can project this coordinate system Maybe I want to do 5,000 in the easting, 10,000 in the northing, and then 100 in the elevation. And I'll say store. I'll say OK. So now it has matched these two points together. And we want X, Y, and Z. So I'll say position and height. I can then add a new point. So now let's say point number 103. Our new local point, I'd say 203. And then I would put in what those coordinates would be. We've then matched 103 and 203. We'll say OK. Match. Or if I only have one point, I have an option to set the rotation angle. I can use geodetic north or I can set my own rotation. I would say okay. I would then be given a combined scale factor for this position based off of the known information on the GNSS receiver. So this combined scale factor will let us go from grid to ground. So I'll say okay and store. And now I've got a local coordinate system that I can measure with my total station while maintaining state plane coordinates on the GSO5. You also have the ability to add satellite images to Leica Captivate to give you an aerial perspective when collecting data with either the GSO5 or your total station. Now, while doing a hybrid setup does increase our efficiency, there is one thing that this setup is missing. The GSO5 has a built-in IMU to do tilt compensation. However, the prism does not. So you would still need to plumb up the rod. However, if we utilize Leica's AP20 auto pull, now we have the ultimate survey setup by introducing the AP20 to our prism with our GSO5, giving us complete tilt compensation whenever we're doing our survey. So using all of Leica's toys here, you're really gonna maximize your data collection as well as improve your efficiency with tilt compensation, ensuring that you can collect high accuracy positions in a local coordinate system on your total station, as well as geodetic positions in state plane coordinates on a GSO5. Special thanks to Leica for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to learn more about any of these products, but be sure to check check out the link in the description. I made a whole video about the AP20, so you can check that out as well. Again, if you're looking to learn more about surveying and geospatial technology, then consider joining the survey school. And with that, I will see you guys next time.